In this video, I'm going to show you how to propagate shrubs using the technique called layering. It's probably the easiest propagation technique that home gardeners can use, and it's great for producing one or two additional plants. If you're not a nursery, you don't need hundreds of plants. You just want something simple to make a second plant, maybe for your friend, or maybe for another spot in the garden. And for that, layering is the perfect technique. The downside of layering is that it takes a while. So I generally will prepare the plant and start the layering process one summer, and you can do it anytime during the year whenever you happen to think about it. And then I harvest the cutting or the layered piece the following year. I'm in zone five, so we have a fairly long cold winter where nothing really happens. This process can be faster in warmer climates. If I want to propagate things faster, I'll use cuttings. But for homeowners, this is a really easy way to do it. So let's have a look at how we're going to do this. Now layering can be done on just about any shrub, but some shrubs work much better than others. To find out if your shrub will work, check to see if you can do cuttings from the shrub. Something that produces roots on cuttings easily is very easy to layer. Some shrubs like French lilac are really difficult to do with cuttings, and so layering is also more difficult. But most of the shrubs in my garden layer just fine. I'm here in front of one of my hydrangea paniculatas, and I'm going to show you how to do a layering for this shrub. The, the actual technique is the same no matter what shrub you use, so it doesn't really matter what plant I'm using. The first thing we need is a branch that's close to the ground. Like we, we really can't use these branches because they're pointing up too far. And I need to get this branch touching the ground. And if I try and bend it that far, it's just going to break. So what I want to do is come down here to the lower parts of the shrub and look for one that's already heading down or one that's close to the ground. And there just happens to be one here and a second one here that's coming out and is actually heading to the ground because it's not getting enough light under here. So it's trying to get out of here and reaching for light. But this stem's nice and close. Now sometimes you have to work with a branch that's a little higher up. And so I have been known to take a branch that's higher and start bending it down. And I might tie this down with some string and a rock just to weight it down. And I'll just let it grow like this for a little while. As it grows longer in the summer, then it'll start touching the ground and then I can do the layering later in the fall. But I'm lucky on this one. We use this the way it is. You want to find a spot along the stem that's going to be buried in the soil. Now the tip of the branch, the growth end, has to be above the soil because we're going to leave these leaves on and it's going to continue to grow. A little bit back from the tip, we want to find a piece of stem that's going to be underground. And for this one, it's right about here. So what I do is I take off all the extra leaves, the side branches, because we don't need any of that. All we need is some leaves at the tip. And I'll take these off right back to the main stem. So now what I have is a bare stem and some growth at the tip. Now you can see it easily goes down to the soil. There are several ways that I can do this, and I'll go into detail about that in a second, but this is the easiest way and it works for a lot of plants. I'll clear the mulch away from the soil. Sometimes I even dig up the soil a little bit just to loosen the top inch and lay that branch in the soil, cover it with about an inch of soil, take a good sized rock, place it on top, and that's it. Now we just wait for nature to do its thing. That stem is touching the soil and the moisture from the soil will cause roots to form. If I come back here next year, I can harvest this. Now let me show you some other techniques that are used to prepare the stems. These might give you faster rooting and a larger root system, but they're a little more complicated to do. For the demonstration, I've decided to show it to you here rather than near the ground under a shrub. And remember, I'd have to do this upside down because I want the cut surfaces touching the ground and it's really hard for you to see what I'm doing. 
Now you can use any kind of a knife, a utility knife works. A very small pen knife would be really nice for this. To be honest, I usually use my pruners. Not because it's really the best choice, but I usually have it with me when I notice the shrub that I want to propagate. Now the first technique is the one I showed you in the garden. Just don't do anything. If this branch is laying in moist soil, there's a very good chance it will root. The second technique is the one I use most of the time because it's pretty easy to do. Take your secateurs or a knife and just scrape the bark off. You want to scrape enough bark off that you see the hardwood, the white wood in the middle. Just leave all of these rough edges. The roots are more likely to develop along the edge of the cut here. Now you can use some rooting hormone and that should increase the rooting process. I just take a little bit on my finger and rub it into the cut. Remember that you don't want to use too much rooting hormone. So any excess you can knock off. Now remember when you do this you're going to be upside down so you have to scrape underneath. Then you lay this cut surface into the soil, cover it with your stone. The other thing you can do is take your secateurs and actually cut some of the bark off. This gives you a nicer edge. Put some rooting hormone on this as well. The danger with this is that when you're working down near the ground and upside down, there's a very good chance that you put too much pressure on this knife and you cut right through the stem. If you do that, the growing tip now is gone. So you can't use this for rooting. But as long as you do this carefully, it works quite well. So any of these techniques can work. Rooting hormone is not needed for a lot of shrubs, but does help on the more difficult to root shrubs. Having a cut surface will certainly improve the chances of you getting rooting. Now let's go have a look at some shrubs that I did last year and see what the results are. This was a very large smoke bush called Grace, which is actually a really nice plant. And you can see I took some branches here and then put a big rock on them. And this has been sitting here for at least a year now. And if you tug on these branches, they're all rooted pretty good. So let's have a look and see what we have. The branches are right here, right below the rock. This is a big one coming up here. So all this growth back here is coming out of, out of this branch right here. The old branch going back to the center of the tree, which is over here, is along here. There's a smaller one here we could probably harvest, but we'll try to get this one out first. Now larger branches like this, I generally like to cut them off with a saw. And I have a special pruning saw that I use. It's a cheap one, because when you cut in soil, they just get dull. So I have two pruning saws, one for above ground cutting that I keep sharp, and this one which is just a junk one from the dollar store that I use for this sort of thing. And then if they're really rooted well, a shovel comes in handy, and I just dig the whole thing up. There's my layered cutting. So this has a pretty good root system. What I do is I cut more of the top off because there's too, too much top growth on this one for the small root system. But just plant this somewhere in the garden and it will grow just fine. This is a different kind of paniculata that I layered about a year ago. The way I test this to see if it's ready is I give it a little tug. And if I feel resistance, then I can be fairly sure that there's some roots attached. Admittedly on this front branch, there's not a lot of tension. But when I go farther back here, it seems to be okay. So I'm going to cut it right at the back to make sure I do get some roots from it. I'm going to use my pruning saw. And then let's dig it up. problem is this is really close to the mother plant and I don't want to damage it so it won't dig too deep. All right got roots here, 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 lots of roots. You can see the top part has sort of two growths. One comes up here 
and a second one that comes up here and a third one out here but this third one doesn't have any any roots I think what I'll do is I'll cut this in half and now I have two plants that'll be perfect and then a second one here which has lots of roots too but it has a lot of top growth for this root system so let's get rid of a bunch of this Remember, roots have to get enough nutrients and water for the plant. And if you have too many leaves, it just can't do that. The root system can't keep up. If I planted this with all those leaves, those leaves would just dry up and fall off anyways. So I'm just saving the plant some extra work. This tip is dead. We can get rid of that. Now we just pot that up. We got a new plant. Don't forget to label it. When you cut these layered branches off the shrub, it's a good idea to get them into soil as soon as possible. Now I've cut a couple here because I'm doing it for the video. That's not really a great idea because these roots start drying out very quickly. The sooner you get them in soil, the better. I like to pop mine up rather than put them in the garden because then I put them in this nursery area I have and they get watered very well here. They get part shade. I keep a close eye on them and that allows them to get a new root system. Then in the fall or probably next spring when they're starting to grow really well then I'll move them out into their final location. I just find it much easier to take care of the plants that way. Potting up is pretty simple. Throw some dirt in, get all the roots in the pot. If you bury the stem a little bit that's okay. Try to get all the roots covered and water it right away. This is the smoke bush that we dug up called Grace. I've had it in the pot now for about two months and you can see that the plant is quite healthy. I like to keep them in part shade for a couple of months. That reduces the amount of sun that these leaves get and it reduces the amount of water evaporation that takes place. That makes it easier for the roots to keep up supplying enough water. You can see new growth here. This has grown since I've potted it up. Looks quite healthy. There's another new growth here. Now that I can see this cutting is healthy and growing well, and I'm pretty sure it has a good root system, it's time to put it into the garden. Because it's been sitting in part shade, what I will do is first condition it to full sun. So each day I'll give it a little bit more sun until it's sitting in full sun. And I do that over about a week's period. That way I'm not stressing the plant. Then I'll tell you and just plant it out the way I do all my trees and shrubs. And I will be making a video about how to do that. I'll let it grow like that for a year or two and let it do its own thing. Wherever it wants to make branches and leaves, I just let it do that. I wait for two or three years and then slowly start shaping this plant. And I also have lots of pruning videos for you to look at. In fact, I have a complete course on pruning and it's all available free on YouTube. What I've shown you here is one type of vegetative propagation. There are other ways to make multiple copies of plants. And the way you do things for herbaceous plants and woody plants is a little bit different. A technique I use a lot in the garden is cuttings. And I have a series of videos to show you how to do vegetative propagation. Just click on the link in the top corner to see those videos.